It's Paul from Devil Sold His Soul, and I'm listening to Rhino Radio. Hey, it's Ed from Devil Sold His Soul, and I'm listening to Rhino Radio. Sub, 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 subscribe. So today, through the magic of the interwebs, I have the honor of speaking to not one vocalist, but two, two devils that sold their soul, devil sold their soul. I have Ed and Paul of the great London band. How are you guys doing today? Really well, thank you. Thanks for having us on the show. Yeah, thank you. Well, thank you very much for joining me. I'm really excited. We have a new album after a really long time. It's called Loss. It's going to be out on the 9th of April, which is just around the corner. And I'm guessing, if I'm not mistaken, for Paul, it's the first album. For Ed, it's the first one in a really long time. And for both of you, it's the first time singing together. Can you yeah. share one, one really good memory that you had from recording, from learning to know each other? What was the best, most memorable moment from the recording of Loss? I enjoy stroking up, stroking the horse when we went for breakfast that time. That's quite... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, one more Sunday morning went for breakfast and met a horse. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> no, just in general, like, we're just hanging out. I mean, to be honest, we we would have really good times here, like writing, and we'd, we'd have a few drinks and just hang out, have a barbecue in the garden. Just, it was so casual and relaxed that made it, the whole experience really just fun. We, yeah, we had a great. really, we had a really, really nice, like, late summer where we just hung out together most weekends and just worked through the record. It was, it was I just fond memories of the whole thing. Really good. Mm. Hanging out in your garden, having, um, I think it was either like the bathroom pizza and the bat <laughs> flying around. That was cool. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> and I want to hear what you think about this weird um, statement. After all the bands have been locked up for the last couple of months, everyone's saying we want to go and tour. We got so many albums coming out, so many uh, great singles coming out. Obviously, yours topping that up, but. Maroon 5's Adam Levine said that he's know he's bands... <laughs> yes, but he said that bands are a dying breed. Do you believe that? What do you have to say? That? It's because he, he's never been in a band. That's, ah, I... that's what I was going to say. I don't think he even understands the, the question that he's posing because I don't think he knows what a band is. So, so would you invite him to one of your shows to see what uh, how wrong he is? I'd, I'd say I wouldn't. I mean, because we're not like aggressive characters. We're... Um, I'd invite him to a show, I'd take him a beer and just have a chat to him and educate him. Because I think that's the best way to deal with people that don't know what the hell they're talking about. Um, and just have a chat, bring him on board. He can go and have a speech, speech to somebody in the press and go, do you know what I was wrong? Hands are great. So this should, is cool. Should I expect a video from the launch show of Adam Levine yeah. in the mosh pit? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right, right on top of everybody, like, like an eel. <laughs> no, I don't think it's going to be his bag, to be fair. <laughs> I guess I want to confront you with a rumor. If I'm mistaken, um, the album was recorded about two years ago almost. Okay, you've been sitting on it for a while. And obviously with Corona pushing everything, but your fans know so much about you. They've been guessing, that's their guess, that um, you guys are a bit nervous about going back on tour because you're scared that you forgot some of the lyrics. Is that true? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 we're good. Um, I, I forget lyrics. I do do this. Um, so I when I first joined, I had to learn a lot of songs um and there were times when it didn't always go like well live <laughs> and i can remember them but i think we'll be okay i think we'll get ourselves into a position where we can practice enough to get back to where we were before yeah and, and the album wasn't recorded two years ago we probably started the, the record album's been recorded over the space of about two years but it's it's we only finished it finished the vocals recorded vocals uh mid-june um last oh. year and um, it was mastered uh, midsummer. So, yeah, and, and, and the only reason why it's coming out as late as it is now is because we decided that we were going to uh, finish the record and have it all done, ready, like before we started approaching labels. We didn't want to go in um, saying, oh, it's going to be like this, it's going to be like that. We just wanted to be like, here's the album. Do you want to put it out? Because then it's just like, it's really much more of a simple um, discussion and no one's disappointed, I suppose. Because it's just this is what it is. It's not, um, it's not a promise for anything. It's just a really simple, straightforward statement. And here's a record. So w after we finished, when we started broaching this stuff, because obviously a lot of people would have that all tied up before they've even necessarily got into the studio, I suppose. So because of that, it, it really made our lead time a lot longer. So w we 
basically it was a six month lead time from uh from completion of contracts, wasn't it, Paul? Yeah, it was what? it was quite we, we did a lot of stuff in terms of things, but a lot of labels and then as soon as the contracts were there, like and with Nick last it was all we were just on a on a pathway to this point now. And it's been it's been pretty non stop. I mean I'm not gonna lie, we've been really busy. We had to during the lockdown we managed to get uh, four music videos done and um, a load of interviews done and it's it's been tricky but you know logistically we made it work I think we should be really proud of ourselves for that because it has been a complicated time. Oh we've crammed a lot of work in and I mean I mean I guess the, the weirdest thing for us now is that we did finish it by the time it comes out it would have been nine months from completion I think so that's 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 kind of it's been a long old wait so to actually go yeah. to put this out does feel kind of unbelievable to us a little bit. Well, I've been enjoying it. One of your friends gave me a sneak peek at the album. Uh, it just sounds great. It made me a bit sad at some point, but it's just a great listen. I was cycling through the pain over the weekend while listening to the <laughs> album. So I cannot wait for the world to enjoy it just like I did. Yes, man. Um, Thank you. I want, I want to take us to something a bit more serious. Um, over the years, the albums and this one as well, touch on dark themes. I know that this one tried to add a bit of optimism. Um, but I was wondering if you have some sort of a comment about social media in those dark times. Do you feel like social media is more of the whole, like the, the, the darkness of it, or is it a tool to get you out of those dark times? That's a really tricky question. I mean, I, I find I find it a bit of a drain in my soul at times. I definitely find it a distraction and a negative one of that at times. Um, obviously, some people will try to use it the platform to promote positivity and mental health and really good things like that but it doesn't always work that way um and there's so many negative people out there that feel like that it's their platform to spread hate um I, you know we get it a lot because you know we put ourselves in a position do music where you're out there people have opinion subjective opinions about your stuff but they there's some really nasty people out, on, out there um that don't deserve that platform. They don't deserve their voice. So yeah, yeah I, 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 there's some stuff on the first track that is on the album that's kind of about that and about how how much we love doing the band and how I could never really leave it behind. But also just like the things people say is just can be absolutely soul destroying. And like, do you really want to put yourself in a position where people can just sit there and pull you apart really and just find all the things that there's like your your sort of deepest fears of yourself and then people finding grabbing hold of that stuff and just verbally putting it into words for everyone to see is like just it's quite yeah, man. Yeah. it's me and I think you know, we're yeah you know, we're we're both both heterosexual males but there's and, and not that matters but some of the homophobic language has been used against us in general for like singing just singing um, yeah loads of it's, horrible it's disgraceful we come from an industry that's, that that tells you that that's inclusive and everybody in the metal industry is like, oh, so, you know, such a lovely industry to be part of and the scene, etc. It's not, um, you know, there's some really, really good parts to it, but people are pretty, pretty nasty out there. Yeah, no. Um, yeah, big time. So um, I don't, I know I don't agree with any of that language and regardless of your sexuality, etc. you're welcome to our shows. Um, you're welcome to be who you are and you shouldn't have to deal with that sort of stuff out in the on social media. Agreed. Well, a relevant event that happened just recently in London, I'm guessing many of our listeners are aware of the horrendous story of Sarah Everett that uh, was murdered in London just a couple of weeks ago. Um, and if that was not horrible enough, that started a very vicious online discussion that also took to the streets about the, the courage and the need to call out uh, aggressive men but aggressiveness in general. Um, what is your take on all of that? Um, kind of touching on the music scene that unfortunately is not clean of violence, is not clean of discrimination. Um, how do you see the, the future of the music scene? Uh, hopefully in a few weeks, a few months, we're gonna open the stages back. Um, how would you like the music scene to be more welcoming and more safe for people? Well, I think first and foremost, um, just 
this whole scene needs to look inwards and it needs to really try and eradicate any of that kind of uh, just bullshit, really. I think, uh, especially given that it's like bands and music industry are probably predominantly men because of just, you know, old bullshit that people believe about themselves. And I think we have a very, uh, we have to, we have a, what's the word? Um, we have to look at this and we have to call it out when we see it. Yeah, we have responsibility, don't we? And that's, that's the thing. Like, if, if, if we aren't going to do it, then who is, you know? And it's it's just, it's it's absolute nonsense, the whole lot of it. And I think, thankfully, like, our, our, well, as far as we know, our fans are pretty decent people. They, they, we have never seen anything like that sort of stuff on shows, um, any of that sort of negative stuff. But it's out there. It's out there. It's happening all the time. Um, something needs to happen. And you, you know, we, everybody, not just the industry, but everybody needs to look at themselves and just say, what the hell are we playing at? globally like why why are we just being such dicks to each other i mean nuclear blast case in point the other day some people were making some horrific comments on their uh uh instagram account about um a post of a, a female band or band with females in it and they were like you know what fuck this they screenshotted it and put it back into their stories with comments saying if this is your view on any of this stuff we don't want you here go yeah. away and just yeah. outing and i think exactly. maybe you don't want to be too aggressive with it, but I, well, maybe you do. I don't know. I mean, we don't want to don't want to be causing any kind of um, like violence or anything. But you certainly want to be quite blunt about it. I think yeah. no, th this to... isn't a subtlety anymore. I don't think this isn't generational anymore. It's not like you know, like same as racism, etc. But like sexism, racism. Uh, the violence of things, it's just it's embedded in society. It needs to be rid, rid. We need to get it out. We need to be progressive. We need to look forward. We need to change the way that we do things. Um, and there's a lot of things out there saying about calling out people that you know, um, if they, you see things, your friends and stuff. Like that. And I think it's right. You've got, you've got to start. We've got to start doing these things, educating people. I've got a little boy now. There's no way I'm going to bring him up without him being very aware of all of these things. He needs to know that what's wrong, what's right, how people get to the point where they think it's okay to abuse people or to, um, to just racist or homophobic slurs out there. It's just, I don't understand it. Yeah, and I think it's, it's just got to the point where like, you can no longer just go, oh, it was a harmless comment. There's no such thing as that anymore. I think you need to be like, no, that's not all right. Got to let your friends know. You got to let the people, your friends' friends know. You just got to call it out. Yeah, I was thinking about it over the last couple of months, uh, expecting the return of shows, and I thought we had over a year of sitting home and just improving ourselves. And it looked like um, the majority of the improvement was uh, learning how to make banana bread and not becoming a better society. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so I'm really hoping that once we get to interact yeah. with each other, we're going to be nicer to each other. So thank you very much for calling out those things and pointing out things that you want change with. And hopefully once we uh, actually make it to stages and festivals, then we're going to be more kind to each other and make it a, a very welcoming scene. I, th I think you're exactly right. I think people just need to think more in terms of being like, kind to each other. People are too, yeah. too quick to just jump down people's throats and just be horrible. Just say all the things. I think everyone needs to really consider. Definitely, and I think I, I think it's become very, it's becoming more and more and more aware. People are becoming more and more aware of what's acceptable and what's not because people are starting to make noise now. And I think if you called any summit, any, called anything a show, I was out outrageously not like, okay. People will call you up on it and expect to be dragged out of that venue by several people, if not the whole crowd. That's how it's going to be going forward, I think. Yeah, and I think I just think it's it's one of those things where just there are people out there who like you know the whole uh, not all men bullshit who just don't seem to understand the fact that it is like history and history and history or stacking up on top of itself, which comes to a point where someone says, "No, I'm not putting up for this anymore," and it's like all it's so many small things sometimes that stack up to this massive like. Thing. when someone goes 
oh, are we making a mountain out of a molehill? It's like, no, you're not. It's no, like, like, I was just being murdered in London. And it's, yeah, and, and like, the women well, no, no. That it's like, that pretty much every woman you know has been, has dealt with, like, sexual harassment at some point in life. That's not an okay statistic. That is an awful statistic. So it's actually, like, shockingly horrific. And that yeah. is sorted, definitely. Yeah, yeah I, think be- I think between the uh, uh, Black Lives Matter of last year and the horrible stories about violence towards women, um, I think we need to learn to, to ask more questions, to listen more, sometimes to even shut our mouths because we don't know half of it. Um, yeah. But again, the, the main goal is just to be kinder to one another. And it's so easy by just listening. Right. So I'm, I'm really hoping that once we're free, it's it's such a weird thing to hope for after we've been fighting Corona for more than a year. We still we haven't learned how to be nice to one another. So again, mm-hmm. thank you very much for opening up about it, for being so honest and open about it. And hopefully uh, it will be nicer once we're out there. Um, I want to touch on one last thing that, again, I feel like it's a, an, a not a stereotypical question that you get in interviews, being two guys in a rock band screaming all the time, well, half of the time. But... Um, Ed, you've already, sorry, Paul, you've already mentioned that you're a father. Um, Ed, I'm not sure. Do you have any kids? No, I'm, I'm, I'm a, a puppy father, but not a human father. <laughs> okay. So I was just wondering something that I think is not being talked about in, in metal discussions about the, the perception of fatherhood. Is it something that came natural to you? I'm guessing, Paul, um, okay. easier. Um, Ed, something if- that you're still struggling with? Uh <laughs> it depends I guess it depends what you want in life it's um I mean I've had this discussion in terms of like a lot a lot of people a lot of my friends some people don't want to have kids some people do some people can't because they'd be really unfortunate as well and it's um it's a really tricky one because I think there's a, there's a like a whole you get put on a pedestal as a person getting to your 30s or late bodies or get married etc you have to have kids and and like um you know, we we decided that we wanted to, and for me, becoming a parent and a father, it's been amazing. But um, equally, for some people, it's not for them, and some some others, I really really wish they did they could as well. I feel so sorry for them, and that that's I've had a lot of friends that I've gone through real, real struggles with that, and I you know, hard goes to them big time because it is really brutal to see it. It's not easy, <laughs> none of it's easy, um, and he and um you know, sleepless nights and the and all of that sort of stuff i would definitely take that over um trying not being able to yeah i think also there's 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 something that's going on sort of a generational change which is really nice is that like paul was saying there was there was a real pressure for you have to tick off all these sort of life um things off the list like oh you got to get a job by this age or you got to have a house by this age you got to have children by this age and i think what's what's re- a really positive thing that's happened over the past sort of generation i suppose is that people are saying hey i don't have to live life by this weird like old school set of rules that you, that everyone yeah. felt like they had to do you must marry the girl in the village and get the diary from her parents <laughs> yeah <basically. laughs> no, that's all crap um that's that stuff is it's dead it's gone you know, um a lot of people want to have a career as well now. It's, um, I guess, that sort of like the, the perception of what is normal. What is normal? Exactly. There is no what's, normal. What's normal is happiness. Um, it should be anywhere. And choosing, choosing the path that makes you have this happy. And for, for me and my wife, definitely having my little, my little boys been amazing. But um, uh, equally, I, if we couldn't, I'd be really happy with the puppy. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's basically, it's going to be interesting trying to tour uh, because I'm. It's going to make it definitely. Yeah. And, and also, Rick's just become a father as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's um, it does change. It will definitely change things. But um, I, I don't think I don't think too much. Hopefully, I, think, um, I can still enjoy myself doing this. And and one thing that we said before we had my little guys, um, it's not to forget who you are. Not don't just become a parent. Become retain your personality retain the things that make you who you are yeah absolutely it's really healthy i think so just to wrap up on that and kind of touch back on the release of loss on 9th of april um does it mean with all the the fatherhood and baby talk 
that there's going to be a baby shark cover in in your upcoming set <laughs> the important uh, questions <laughs> yeah I, I, well maybe maybe not baby shark um but yeah i, I don't know we'll, just, we'll see what happens on the next record I, yeah, we will do <laughs> chimpanzee in the segue though yeah <laughs> it's, it's tough. Uh, okay. no keep on going <laughs> I no, I was just, I was just gonna, uh, no i don't know i'll be cover wise so we, we might do some stuff you never know I'm, I'm not gonna let anybody know yet um but yeah, I guess in the future, obviously, we went through a really tough time writing this record, and it's it's quite a sad record. But next one, it's probably going to be even sadder because we don't write happy songs. <laughs> Guys, thank you very much for sharing and opening up about everything. I know it's not the traditional "What's your favorite track," but uh, it's a great <laughs> nah, it's eye-opening cool, session. So thank you very much for for doing that. Um, as we said, loss. As we said, Loss is out 9th of April. I've been enjoying it for the last couple of days. Great, heavy, dark. Um, you guys are going to love it, so make sure to check it out. Is there anything else that you guys want to add to fans and listeners before we say goodbye? I just... If, you know. I was say, if, if, if you could check out Loss, that would mean the absolute world to us. We've spent three to four years of our, our lives putting it together, so we'd just be stoked if anyone gave it a listen, really. Yeah, it's really it's a really personal record. Um and, you know, we've written it because we were in places that we maybe needed these songs um, to help us get out of. And hopefully it helps some of you who may be going through some tough times, um, whether it's mental health, or whether you're grieving from somebody, et cetera. Um, and maybe you can connect to it. And, you know, if it does help you, then you know, we're, really, we're really grateful that it has. Um, but just enjoy it. First and foremost, enjoy yourself. Keep, keep, uh, be progressive as a as people and just hopefully see some shows and if you see any bullshit from the crowd anyone doing anything untoward call it out and yeah good on you guys again thank you very much it's been great talking to you and as i said i've enjoyed loss for the last couple of days so if you haven't already go and pre-order it pre-save it and then listen to it loads of times and then see you in the baby shark mosh pit with puppies <laughs> and babies <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for your time, dude. Sub, 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 subscribe. Sub, 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 subscribe. <laughs>